We got pork belly out there and he's got a whole pork loin and he's going to take it apart just for you. He's going to show you where the tenderloin comes from and the back ribs and the, the pork chops and pork roasts and pea meal bake. I know, the list goes on. He said, Harry, there's so many things we're going to get out of this pork loin, you won't believe it. Without further ado, let's go off and see that famous, that wonderful, that hilarious, let's go see pork belly and what he can do with a pork loin. Hey folks, Pork Belly here. Guess what? We got a big surprise going on today. We got a whole pork loin. We're going to take it apart. We're going to show you where everything comes from. That uh, probably 90% of the meat that sells out of the meat department today that is pork comes from. So we have the diagram up here. It says loin here. The loin actually does extend a little further right to the tail because on this piece right here, this is where the tail comes out. So this would be the sirloin end, much like uh, beef. We have the sirloin end, and then it goes into the T-bone portion up here. And as it weans down, we have like what we call the center cut, which is here. And then this part goes into the blade shoulder up here. So without any further ado, I will now take this apart. As you can see, we have the pork tenderloin here. I had to actually remove the pork tenderloin um, so I could remove these bones so I can do this all right here and not go off and use the saw in the middle of everything. So the pork tenderloin sits here. It's the only muscle that's inside the animal's bone structure and it's a floating muscle. Okay, so we're gonna put that there. Next, we remove the chine bone on the saw. You can see right here, a little bit of the spinal cord that runs down this way here. So if this animal was standing up it would be up like this, okay? And then, like I said, this is where the tail comes out here, the shoulder goes here, and then the head goes there. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to get rid of these bones right here. We don't need those for anything at all. Uh, I don't. I mean, in a plant, they might use them for something, but I don't use them for anything. We're just going to turn that so we can see this pork tenderloin here. As you can see, there's quite a bit of fat on it. And we're just going to trim that fat up a little bit, get rid of it, like that, and get down to the meat. So this is all the trimmings that we would use in uh, ground pork. Bit of fat, bit of fat, and actually that bit of fat we're going to use later because uh, in another episode we're going to make sausage from this pork loin here too. So, by the time I get this trimmed down, there's a little bit of a membrane there I don't want in the fat or in my sausages. By the time we get this trimmed down, this here is what you might see for sale in the grocery store. They call this a chain. We're going to get rid of that. and that is usable in sausages, this little piece here. So this is what you would primarily buy in a grocery store, okay? What we're gonna do, we're just gonna get rid of that silver side. We don't wanna eat that. No, I'm not gonna put it in the sausage meat. Uh, we're gonna put that over there. This is what they call connective tissue. It just holds the muscle together, all the bundles of fibers <clears throat> that make that muscle. Okay, and there we go. There's the pork tenderloin just like that. Looks a lot different than it did when it was there, but that's it right there. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna set this off to the side for now. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to dig out this bone here that they call the oyster. Okay, so we just go around the bone like this. This is actually the hip bone, or part of the hip.
And we just cut off a little bit of meat that I left on there. And again, this is all just the trim that would, if it was beef, it would go for uh, ground beef. In this case, it's going to go for ground pork, which is going to go for sausages. So we got that there. This is a bit of waste, that bit of bone. Actually, I'm just going to take this chain and just cut it up a little bit more. Um, so that it's all ready to go when we do actually go to make the sausages. I just want to grind all the meat once. That's the way I like it to be, nice and chunky. Okay, so we're going to remove this little bit of fat there. And uh, we're going to take away any little bones that are there. little bones here are called, uh, they, they call them button ribs, but they're not ribs, they're just uh, little button bones. Um, you can buy these actually in a store, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the slaughterhouses and that will uh, take them off in one piece like that and put them in bags and sell them. I don't like them because uh, <clears throat> I'm always afraid that children are going to choke on it. They are just the size of a button. So, you want to be careful with that. Okay, so we're into the, uh, the final bones there. These are actually called feather bones. And we've removed them. I just run my hand along this quickly, just in case there's any little sharp bones that I may have missed. I can feel them here. Um, and we just remove them like that. Tune up my knife a little bit. Okay, we're good there. Um, so, what we're going to do next, I'm just going to turn this. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, this is another thing they call button, button ribs here too. These are flat little disc bones. And I'm going to actually, when I cook the ribs, um, I'm going to uh, throw this in with it. They're very tasty. And that's a strip like that. You can see it's very meaty. I actually left one rib bone there. Um, there's lots of meat on that. It's very tasteful, taste, tasty meat. So we will uh, definitely want to use that. Okay, so again, I'm just going to check for little bones. It's one of those little button bones I missed. Now, if the butcher doesn't um, remove this chine bone from here um, properly, you won't be able to get your ribs apart. And you definitely want to get those ribs apart. So, um, as you can see, we got this cut up pretty good. You just got to remove these little button ribs here, button bones. So while this is on here, uh, you know what, I'm going to take it off and then I'm going to do, I will show you how it's done. What I was going to do was remove this membrane from here. It's just a little easier while you got some weight on it. So we just keep cutting along like this. And this removes the back rib. Like that. Okay. So we're just going to trim a little bit of the fat off there. The fat goes for sausages. Okay, there we go, that's beautiful. And there is the back rib. So like I said, this membrane, um, where the spine bore or the uh, spine bone was, that's where you uh, start to remove the membrane. and then pull it from back to front. If you try to go the other way, it's, uh, it comes off in pieces. It doesn't all come off in one shot like that. So now there's your back rib all ready to go. I'm going to show you a couple of different things that you can do with the back rib, but we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so again, one more time, just checking for bones. There's no more bones that I can find. 
Okay, so now this is what they call the sirloin end. It's, uh, it's tender. It can be used to make um, souvlakis. Okay, it, uh, remember it comes from this end here. It is the transition piece between the leg and the loin. Um, <clears throat> most pork is soft. It's soft meat. It's tender. It's not quite the same as beef, but um, so it, it is good. Uh, what I like to do th with this though is I like to make um, some souvlaki. So I'm going to talk to uh, Delicioso and I'm going to see if he can make some souvlaki out of it. Anything that I'm trimming off here is going to go for sausages. Okay. Whoop. Sorry, I forgot where sausages was going here. Sausages is over here. And again, you can see like this isn't really useful for anything other than say sausages. So that's what we're going to do with it. I could probably cube it up a little bit and make souvlaki. And I'm going to uh, see if Delicioso can do that for me. Um, souvlaki is very simple to make. It's just basically a bit of uh, garlic, some lemon, and then we remove this outer fat. Remember folks, when you make sausages, you want it to be about 40% fat. Yeah, you're cringing now, I know, but if you don't, uh, if you don't make it fatty enough, it's going to come out very dry like sawdust. Um, and you definitely don't want that. So yes, there is a fair bit of fat going into this. I'll pick through that later. I uh, threw it in the wrong place. Is there was some meat there that I wanted out for the sausages and I'll just go through that a little later. Okay, so now that I've cleaned all that up, I got rid of all the uh, connective tissues there and it looks like that. Now when we buy these, we buy them, they call them Buckeyes. So when I order this, if I order just this, that's what I'm ordering is a Buckeye. But you can see here, I mean there's nothing wrong with that as a chop, okay? But like I said, I'm going to uh, I'm going to make a souvlaki out of it, or I'm going to ask Delicioso to do so for us, uh, unless he's obviously unless he has another recipe. But uh, I'm sure he'll uh, accommodate me with that. Okay, so. We have that. Again, I'm just checking for bones. The only bone that's in here is right here. It's actually, this particular one is just a bit of cartilage. Okay, and that's it. There's a bit of meat on top. Again, we don't like to waste anything. And that'll go for sausages and this is just waste. Okay, so. The next thing we're going to do is, this is the rib end. So if this was beef, this would be prime rib right here. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it right here. You see that line right there? That's where I know that it ends. But I want to cut it and just show you that if this was beef, they would have this butter fat in here. Actually, this one is very lean. It's not, uh, not very fatty at all. Let's see how this end's got a bit more on it. Yeah, there, you see a bit more there, I think. Okay, this is a very lean uh, piece of pork, so. So this is going to go for sausage. I'll cut it up small. Throw it in the bucket there, and there's a pork chop. Okay, the rest of this... I'm going to cut this off here so they just have the loin and uh, you want to get as much sausage out of it as you can. There was a small little bone there caught on my knife. So from there we just cut this up like this. 
Now I know what you're thinking. This seems pretty fatty, and I know there, but I know that there's a bit of lean meat that's going to be going into this very soon. It's going to lean it up a bit. Okay, so there we go. We got a bit of fat in there. Okay, and now this. We just trim up a bit. And it could go into a meat counter like this now as a nice uh, rib and roast. Okay. So, the last thing left is this center cut piece of, uh, of pork loin. So, what we're going to do, we're going to remove this whole line of fat. Like that. It is a bit of fat, fat and meat mixture there. And we're just going to cut it up. Why are we cutting it up? You're right. It's going for sausages. Normally I wouldn't uh, cut the pieces so small. But um, the grinder I'm going to use is just a small hand grinder and um, I just want to grind the meat once. Normally, um, you know, you might grind it twice, but uh, for this purpose, we're just going to mix it all up like this and then grind it once. Okay, so there we have that. Now, I know you're wondering. What the heck do we do with the rest of this? Well, it goes for boneless pork chops. Okay, they could be uh, they could be butterfly pork chops, which would look like this. Okay, so there's a butterfly pork chop. Or we could just cut them right through and put them out like that. Okay? And that's what we do with that. Now, this is also the same piece that we use for pea meal bacon. Okay? So what we would do is we'd get it all trimmed right up um, and ready to be pickled. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to slice this up. It's a very quick way to make uh, pea meal bacon. And I know Dan, he likes female bacon, so he's, um, he's going to be ready to uh, try this when we have it ready tomorrow. So I have all that trimmed up a little bit there. Now what I'm going to do is just cut a few slices as thick as I would want for female bacon. We'll make up four slices here. And we're going to make a brine, and I will explain that process in a couple of minutes, okay? And uh, so there we have our, we have some pork chops here. We have some uh, meat going for pea meal bacon. Now, I said I was going to show you something with the rib. So we're going to leave that for a minute, and we're going to take this piece here. We're just going to cut it in half one more time. We're going to set it up like this. We're going to take the back rib. Now if I was actually going to do this, I would cut down between the ribs, okay, making uh, the uh, crown roast of pork. And then I would get some string and I would tie that around there. You can see how that would look like that and that tied around. And that's a nice little crown roast of pork for two people. Okay, might as well go all the way with it now. Although it is the rib between the meat between the ribs you want for your uh, for ribs. You don't want the meat that's on top. The meat that's on top of the ribs is this. Um, I want everyone to notice too that there's only one rack of ribs on the loin. Okay, it's no different than our bodies, where um, you know we have one rib cage. That's it. So. You know, some restaurants might call this baby back ribs, so there you go. 
And you would just put some string around that, tie it up, and uh, you got a nice little pork roast there for two, four people. Um, so these are back ribs, okay? Some people might refer to them as baby back ribs, restaurant term only. Um, or, you know what, if they're smaller, sometimes they call them baby back ribs. It makes them sound a little more attractive. I have customers sometimes come up to the meat counter, yeah, I want baby back ribs. Well, all we have is back ribs. Well, I want baby back. Where can I get baby back ribs? Well, there's no such thing. There's back ribs. From there, there's side ribs that come down under this way here, and that's the belly. The meat goes for bacon, and the ribs go for, they call them spare ribs, side ribs. They're side ribs, okay? This is the back ribs, back ribs, side ribs, okay? That's basically it. Even those uh, little bones here I was talking about, you know, they call them button ribs. They're not ribs at all, they're button bones. Okay, so again, we can take that, cut it into a butterfly pork chop, or into a single chop, just like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run this right through into pork chops like that. Um, there's a nice little roast. There's another little roast. And you know what? Here, we'll cut this and we'll do the little roast. Now, for roasting, you want to make sure um, that you cook your pork to like 135, 140 at the most. Especially this. You can see how lean that is. It's very, very, very lean. You don't want to overcook it. The rib, again, don't want to overcook it. And that's the biggest problem with uh, pork today is trichinosis. We've heard, uh, we've heard uh, Stakeman say that before. It's a thing of the past, okay? Cook your pork to medium. It doesn't have to be well done. 140, 145, that's about it. Keep in mind that uh, meat always continues to cook another five degrees higher after cooking. So um, after you're letting it rest for a little bit, it's still, uh, it's still cooking. So, make sure that you don't overcook it. It just will be dry, okay? I remember uh, Delicioso saying he wanted to stuff this. So, for stuffing, what you want to do is you want to cut, without going all the way through, make a line like that. So you're opening it up. Okay, you see I, mean, I take my time there. I turn it, I open it up again, the opposite way, so that we have um, a nice opening. Now he could put rice in there, he could put a bread dressing, whatever. Whatever he wants to put in there, he puts it in like that, right? We're not going to do this. I'm just giving a little demonstration here. I'm sure Delicioso will do the same, but now you just wrap it up. Look at that, it's hidden. It's one of those hidden gems, you know, <laughs> that, uh, that you find. Okay, so we did that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, here's what else you can do. Look at this. Sorry, I almost forgot about this. You could take this chop and uh, going through the top of the fat very carefully, cut a pocket in it. And again... You could put rice in there, whatever you like. Put it in. Doesn't require a lot. Put it in. Ta da. Make sure you always brown your pork on one side if you're doing this in the oven. Brown it. Turn it up on the pan. Put it in the oven like that. There you go. I guess that's it from Butcher's Corner. I'm Pork Belly. We'll catch you next time on Butcher's Corner. Bye for now, folks. Let's go down to Steakman, see what he's got for us today. Steakman, it's our show. It's beyond the plate. You doing it? Pork Belly has simply taken too long on his part of the segment of the show. Ah, I have decided to play chess with Thrilla McGrilla. And obviously, I'm in a bad way. Wow, Stakeman, we thought you'd have a little more than that. 
Listen, we know, we understand here at Meat TV that you're missing uh, your chess partner there, Stephen Hawking. But hey, I told you, get a hold of Carlson Magnus, Magnus Carlson. He's going to give you a call back. Talk to him. Play chess with him. Let's get him in there. Come on. Anyway, make sure next time you have something for us, buddy. You got to have something every show. I know you're upset, but we got to have something. Okay. This is Harry signing off of Meet TV. Questions, comments, remarks about today's show. You want to see more boning things out? I know we got a hip there. We got the loin. I'm sure we have a few more things coming our way. Till next time on Meet TV, I'm Harry Jordan signing off.